So welcome to part number two of my vlog number eight. I was inspired by visiting some old Prodigy songs. If you haven't seen the first part, I highly suggest that you go back and watch. I think before I get into the song, I'd like to talk a little bit about the inspiration. There comes a time whenever you have to decide what the song that you're working on is going to be about. What it's going to be about lyrically, if you have lyrics, what it's going to be about generally. Is it going to be a driving, fast, aggressive song? Is it going to be a song that you want to put the headphones on and just sit back and chill? Or is it a song that, that you want to convey a message with? There's, there's so many different reasons for music. I feel that you want to convey some sort of emotion. So what I had to do is I had to decide on this particular track whether I wanted it to be all up-tempo or whether or not I wanted it to be um, laid back because I had some pretty aggressive drum beats that I was working out in my head. So I decided I wanted to stick with the jazz feel, but I usually use electronic drums mixed in with the live drums. So it's taking me in some different directions. I laid down a few vocal lines that lent itself more towards a laid back, chill type of vibe. So I think that that's kind of where, where we're going with this. And I came up with some really interesting melodies. So the lyric idea I came up with was inspired by Keith Flint's passing. The word why came up in my, in my thoughts quite a bit. We're always asking the reason why. Why are we here? Why are we on earth? Why, why don't I have enough money? Why, don't, why am I always struggling? I feel that that is synchronous to my inspiration for the song in the first place, which was the tragic passing of Keith Flint. So I'm going to explore that. So let's go into the studio and see how I work out some of these ideas and how some of them come into fruition. So as I said, I have a rough version of the track right now. It's super rough, nothing is really permanent, and I always like to keep it open for change if I decide something doesn't fit down the road. So everything is always evolving. The next thing that I came up with was this arpeggiated line. Let's take a listen to that. <laughs> And that came from this plugin right here, the Silent One. It's one of my favorite plugins and it just sounds amazing. It really inspires me. It gets the juices flowing. I opened up another instance of Silent and I used this one along with the first one. So let's listen to the second one. So whenever you listen to the first one mixed in with this one, it's pretty cool. Oh shit, what did I do? Okay, I forgot to say that I automated the gate on the first one so that it, it closes the gate and it, it changes up the arpeggio just a little. Here, close. the gate closing and in here is that with the uh, the second silent okay and that is where I put this kind of jazzy drum set part and it goes into something like this The next thing that I came up with was a bass line. And let's listen to that bass line with just the drums. And once again, those drums are super, super rough. And I put on an electronic kick behind it just so I could hear it a little bit, a little bit clearer because it's a little muffled right now. Let's 
listen to all those together. <laughs> So I had that rolling for a while and then I I was messing around on the violin and I came up with this ominous line. Very simple, very kind of Miles Davis-ish, real melodic. Let's listen to that with the rest of the drums and the bass. So then what I did was I thought, okay, that's very cool. So I'm, I, I'm thinking about getting into some vocals. So I thought, well, what about putting vocals over top of that, that introduction, the second half of it? Because it has some really cool chord progressions. So what I like to do whenever I'm doing vocals is I usually don't have any lyrics. So I'll just kind of mumble over top of it. I'll come up with like a melody line and I'll just make up words, which is not really anything but gibberish. And I don't really love showing this to people because it's, it's, it's a work in progress and this is never gonna make the finished track. So I'll back it up a little bit going into the, uh, to the part with the vocal on it. <laughs> So that's the first part of it. And then what I did was I wanted to get out of that kind of jazzy electronic into doing some more lyrical stuff. I came up with another chord progression. And once again, I just saying gibberish over top of it. We came up with this chord progression. And the drum beat that I put over top of that was a little bit more poppy than jazz. And this line came up a little later, which was a cool type of violin line that I'm planning on using a bunch of big orchestral strings on as well as live violins. So I love 
like the way that this kind of laid back pop type of a beat was going and I thought a violin solo over this would be really really cool and then I thought well what about if I took the exact melody that I had over the first set of chords and put them over these chords and see if it would fit and sure enough ta-da it fit it's so haunting let's take a listen to it <laughs> And then what about a guitar solo to kind of complement it and take its take take over from it and then build on that. So I don't want you to hear all that because it's completely completely rough. And then after that, I came up with the idea, how about taking the melody that I originally had in the beginning that's going over top of the intro and use those same chord progressions again at the end and then also use that melody line in the beginning so that it's kind of like bookends. So let's listen to that. And I was thinking to have some guitar kind of come, come in and out over top of that. <laughs> And just to refresh your memory, here's what it sounds like in the beginning. exact same vocal line but with uh, different different instrumentation behind it the exact same chords but different different instrumentation so that's a kind of a rough outline again things will probably change they'll probably change a lot I try not to hang on to things too much if I'm feeling something other than what I started with that's fine I'll I'll experiment and try out the new things like I kind of threw out that whole drum drum thing that so I have definite ideas whenever I start a song and sometimes they make it all the way through the through to the end and sometimes they don't I'm not precious about hanging on to them if they work fine if they don't I'll use it in a different different piece or a different song. So that's where we're standing right now, where everything is kind of a rough, but it has a nice, a nice cohesive element to it, where it's, it's new and it's original, but it, it has some familiar qualities to it at the same time. So that's it for part two. I'm really excited to show you guys part three because I was working on the track today and I came up with some really cool ideas. So see you in the next one. Thank you.